morning, everyone. Welcome to our October ESEA office hour. As Rita mentioned, we are focusing some of our attention on the performance report that's due at the beginning of November, but we also want to be sure that we're updating you on a couple key things before we jump into the performance report. So thank you for joining us today. Great news. Our team has uh, not a new member, but somebody who has returned from maternity leave. Uh, you folks know Jess, and she is back to support her regions, Aroostook and Kennebec. So if you have some questions and follow in those regions, go ahead and reach out to Jess. Uh, Jeanette and I both continue to support the team, but again, it's great to have Jess back. And as you can imagine, there's some time that she will need to transition back into this role, having uh, taken care of a family for quite some time and moving back into the work environment will be a big change for all of us. So welcome, Jess. Thanks, guys, and thanks for your sweet messages in the chat. Much appreciated. So now we draw our attention to a few business items. So we are aware that Grants for Me is currently pulling incorrect substantial approval dates, which has implementations on your invoicing date as well. So we are working with the software developers to be sure that we can resolve that problem. Right now, we do not have a solution, but we will let you know as soon as that solution has been made available. Essentially, if you are looking for that substantial approval date to be sure that your obligations are within that timeline, the date can be found in the history log. You may need to look through uh, some detailed history, but there is an opportunity to see when your substantial approval date is within that history log. So again, we will send out an email blast through the system once it has been resolved, but we wanted to draw your attention to it and let you folks know that we're aware of it and we're trying to resolve the issue. Quick reminder that for about 56 of the districts, there is one more performance report besides the ESCA consolidated to finalize before the November 1 date. Uh, folks have been, I'm happy to see a lot of like sort of revision, budget revisions happening sooner rather than later in order to get those final expenditures reported, outcomes on goals. I do read uh, what districts write when it comes to sort of what's worked in the programs. Um, if this continues to be funding available, continue to use um, the learnings from the performance report uh, to help other districts consider programming, et cetera. So uh, please be sure that that is all set to go by 1030. I do use a consultant checklist for that. So you'll notice that if you've gotten an approval recently, but it's uh, not reviewed for the performance report, it's because I approved budget revisions and you'll need to resubmit for that final checklist, the consultant checklist to read okay for all seven of the items um, in that application. Thank you and hope summer programming went well. Um, and this one is about our FY26 Title I Equitable Services. We held a training about uh, putting in Title I low-income students in Synergy slash NEO. Um, uh, Allie Cookson has continued to be an incredible resource. She said she's met with districts one-on-one -on -one and kind of walked through them and non-public uh, non leaders and walked through with them and has gotten some feedback that it's not as bad as it seemed, which is good feedback to get. Um, and we're gonna actually talk a bit more about this in the Title I Committee of Practitioners. I'll be sending out the agenda and the date next week. Um, and so this will be continued to be a topic of discussion as well as data in general when it comes to Title I and trying to streamline processes. So thank you all for being accepting of this change. Um, and we will continue to support uh, non-publics and public LEAs in this. This is just a general reminder. We're gonna go through a bit about maintaining rank and distribution when it comes to the performance report. Um, but I do just want to remind folks that when you budget out funding per Title I school, it is in accordance to rank and distribution for many districts, not all who, you know, some districts don't have to follow rules because they have less than a thousand students and or just one school per grade span. But many, many, many SAUs in the state of Maine do maintain rank and distribution and have to. Um, and so just be aware that if you are a district that has to rank according to priority to poverty level and or priority grade span, 
um, that you're indeed not necessarily making budget revisions and moving a lot of funding school to school because that could impact whether you're actually still prioritizing your highest poverty schools or your highest to priority grade span. So really important, this is part of the performance report, but just note 22, 23, all of those current applications that are alive, if you're ever changing budgets, things like that, it's really important that you are still maintaining rank and distribution because the intent of Title I is to serve those highest needs schools. All right, and as was mentioned earlier, we're going to get into the how-to of the performance report here in a few minutes, but just to sort of cover the what, you know, what is the performance report? This is uh, reporting on a number of fiscal and programmatic pieces of data. It is due on 11-1. It, uh, in order to do this, all of your FY24 invoicing must be completed through 9-30-24. You'll then need to click revision started on your FY24 ESCA application and those performance report pages will populate. You'll see pages where you talk about the outcomes on the goals that were originally outlined in the application. You'll see pages to report your expenditures. There's a number of pieces of data we have to report to the federal government for various titles. So uh, those are there as well as potentially a Title I-A waiver request if you need that. Also as part of this process, we look to close out FY22 as those funds had to be obligated by 9:30. 24 and you have until the end of the calendar year to invoice for them and just like with your application any sort of feedback we have on things that need to be revised will be on the consultant checklist good morning everyone as ryan indicated the fy24 expenses need to be invoiced through 9 30 24 before submitting the fy24 performance report the expenses reported in the performance report must align with the invoiced uh, expenses and grants for me. Uh, grants for me only allows the SAU to submit one invoice at a time for each title. So keep that in mind. For example, if you submit a Title I invoice for FY23, you can still submit an invoice for FY24 Title I as well. The SA, you will not be able to submit subsequent invoices until the pending invoice receives a status of state accounting system paid. This next slide. This slide is just a reminder of all the open grants, the grants that are closing, the grants that are in liquidation period, Please get your invoices in as soon as possible for any of the bold um, letter grants in the chart. Reimbursement reminders. Always make sure that the expenses are reasonable, necessary, and applicable to the program in align with the SAU's approved application. Just because an expense is allowable under a certain title, does not mean that it is necessary, reasonable, or applicable. Um, expenses must uh, incur within the period of performance. Be mindful of subscription or license fees for digital access that exceed the period of performance for the grant. These will not be reimbursed. Some things to consider when budgeting professional development using grant funds, registration, attendance, and travel must all be incurred during the period of performance for the grant. Reimbursement is only available after the completion of the professional development and travel. There has been some changes to the grant award notice for FY25. If you receive more than 250,000 in ESEA funds, a change to the terms and conditions requires monthly invoicing. The FY23 GANs have been updated with the Tidings Amendment Waiver approval. The main DOE received a Tidings Amendment Waiver, which extends the period of performance through 93025. Brewman training is coming up faster. And we have 152 people uh, registered at this point. We can only 
accommodate 200. So if you intend on uh, attending, please get your registration in. The next federal fiscal office hours is October 24th, uh, 2024. Please um, get your questions or topics that you want to hear more about. You can send them to me and I will make sure that we address those during the federal fiscal office hour on the 24th. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to pause. I think we've addressed all the questions in the chat box.